What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Eye Test, where we simplify your process as a fantasy football manager. We're back. Another episode. Yesterday, we did the four biggest losers of the NFL offseason. So if you haven't seen that, go back to our channel. Watch that. Today, we're going over four big winners. These are definitely people that you want to have on your fantasy team of the NFL offseason. Um, that's who we're going to be going over today. Names like Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, and much, much more. But before we get started, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. You can also like this video. Uh, What'd you say? Tap that. <laughs> yeah, t- tap that. Yeah, definitely yeah, tap that subscribe button and the and the like button. And then go ahead and tap that comment button and let us know who you think is the biggest winner of the NFL offseason. Is it a quarterback because maybe he got a certain weapon drafted by him? Could it be a wide receiver that got a quarterback? Oh. Who knows? We've got a couple of those options here. We're going to go over them tonight. We're going to start off with Chris Olave. He, he's been a winner for since he started last year. And he's going to continue to be a winner next year. Why is that, Paul? Yeah, so I really like Chris Olave, but first I wanted to mention that we are DTT down to tap. So hit that subscribe. I just want to make a <laughs> I like that. stupid joke there. I that's, couldn't let it go. I that's could- that's horrible. <laughs> I like uh, it. Yes. So we'll keep but it anyway, in. without further ado, Chris Olave is a huge winner here in my eyes, and it's really about the Saints getting Derek Carr. They finally don't have a QB carousel. Did they roll out three quarterbacks last year? It was Jameis, Andy Dalton, and was there a third? Taysom Hill. Taysom Hill, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and then Taysom Most Hill. Most consistent starters, but they finally get at least a stable, I think we can all call Derek Carr a stable fantasy quarterback who looks for his receivers. I mean, Devontae Adams lit up the world last year. Everybody was afraid that because... Aaron Rodgers wasn't throwing Devontae the ball that he would suffer fantasy-wise, and he didn't. He still shined. And so with that information that we have from last year, I think that Derek Carr is going to come and elevate Chris Olave's game, and he's finally going to have a capable quarterback throwing him the football. He's got a year of experience under his belt. He can run every route in the book. He's a threat at all three levels, and now he's got a guy to give him the ball. So I think the sky's the limit for Chris Olave. Yeah, and I think that, just like we said in the last episode yesterday, so go ahead and watch that, the four biggest losers of the NFL offseason. I think since we were talking about how Alvin Kamara is a big loser and he's he's certainly on his downfall, that just means they're going to be giving the rock even more to the wide receivers on the Saints. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not keeping Michael Thomas out of this biggest winners conversation. Obviously, Olave is taking over that wide receiver one role. But Michael Thomas is someone of a winner, too. Bob, I'm not sure if you have a, a take on either of those two, but floor is yours. I know a lot of people are going to hate me for this take, but I'm still, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not sold on Chris Olave. I am sold. I'm sold on him being a very good receiver, a consistent receiver, a consistent starter in fantasy. But I'm not sold on where he is currently valued. I'm not sold on him being on, I got another guy we will talk about on Garrett Wilson's level. Garrett Wilson for me is in a different tier passes the eye test and had some really eye popping games with Zach Wilson as his quarterback last year. I know a lot they had, you know, a shitty quarterback last year, but didn't really have any of those eye popping games for me. So again, not saying I don't think he's good or anything like that, but with Michael Thomas coming back, I'm just not really ready to say that Olave is going to be dominating the saints offense yet. I still have to see a little bit more, but I do think they're both winners because like you said, Paul, they do have the stable quarterback now, and that should only help their production this upcoming season. Yeah, I mean, we saw it with Derek Carr to Devontae Adams, and not saying that Olave is anything on that level yet, but we at least know that Derek Carr can play with elite talent, so that's good. All right, well, Bob already mentioned him, so let's let's talk about Garrett Wilson here, because he we, we can certainly all agree that he is a 
big winner of the offseason, and that's the obvious. He finally has a quarterback that can throw the ball, and he just so happens to be a Hall of Famer. Bob, you can have this one because I know you, I know know you have a thing for, for Jets receivers. You know I'm itching. You know I'm itching because <laughs> this is my team. But no bias here. This is all seriousness. This is strictly professional talk. Sure. Mm-hmm. Garrett, <laughs> Garrett Wilson is, he is, I think, has not maybe will never I don't know if he'll ever get to like you know Justin Jefferson's you know level or Jamar Chase's but to me he has that kind of potential from what I saw last year the eyes just tell you that whereas like I said I was questioning a little bit with Chris Olave when the ball is in his hands he is making plays and now he has Aaron Rodgers coming in who a motivated Aaron Rodgers, nevertheless, and looks like Aaron Rodgers is much more happy than he was in Green Bay. Maybe that's just the social media people doing their thing. But I think the connection between Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson this season is going to be just about as perfect as you could get. And it's going to be like what was Aaron the- Rodgers and Devontae Adams very close to that. <laughs> what was the, when we first started doing this, what was like the segment where we were like, that sweet, sweet oh my filet God. mignon. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> filet or flank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's that sweet filet of the week? Garrett yeah. Wilson could be the filet of the season. Could I would be. actually, Bob, I was thinking of of comps for, for Garrett Wilson. I feel like I've said this before, but I, I put him at the CD Lamb range. That's where I see Garrett Wilson at, especially from like rookie to sophomore season. I can I'm going to I think we're going to see that jump just like CeeDee Lamb did. Yeah, I think he just he again, he just passes the eye test, whereas some a couple other guys just don't. He looks like he has superstar potential in him. Paul, are you concerned with the other amount of receivers that Aaron Rodgers has brought onto the Jets? Or would you say, nah, Garrett Wilson's still a winner? Oh, I think Garrett Wilson is definitely still a winner here. But I I was, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to make a point. I was like, Bob, how mad are you going to be if, like, through the first three or four weeks, Alan Lazard just has, like, 14 targets a game? Just I almost say. put Alan Lazard as a winner because, I like, he went from having Jordan Love as his quarterback for a second to Aaron Rodgers again. Yeah. But <laughs> But, no, I think... I wouldn't let that narrative fool you. I think Garrett Wilson's a budding superstar in this league if he's not already considered a superstar. He certainly passes the eye test, and now he finally gets a Hall of Fame-bound quarterback to throw him a football instead of the QB carousel of my elite prince, Joe Flacco. Thank you for everything. (laughs) Mike White and Zach Wilson. So it'll be really fun to watch Garrett Wilson this year, but it is certainly something that I know Garrett Wilson owners, especially if you reach for him in the middle first round, maybe yeah. if you're trying to hit a home run mm-hmm. and those first two or three weeks, you're like, why is Alan Lazard getting all the red zone looks? This is yeah. really weird. And But no, I think overall Garrett Wilson will be fine. I think it's a very, very good situation. He, he's, he's a big winner in this case. Let's be honest. Aaron Rodgers probably chose the Jets because he he was looking at the receivers that he was going to throw to. And at the time, it was only Garrett Wilson. And Brees Hall. Well, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. But, I mean, like, you know, Aaron Jones is a great running back for Aaron Rodgers. You know, so so I think he was really looking at those receivers like, finally, dude. Like, (laughs) this is someone (laughs) that I want to throw the ball to. Yeah. I mean, a huge winner for Garrett Wilson. I mean, you saw before we move on real quick, you know, you saw that what happened when Aaron Rodgers lost Devontae Adams. And I think part of it was due to also Aaron Rodgers, I think, just didn't want to be in Green Bay anymore. But you saw the fall off last year when he lost Devontae Adams. So Garrett Wilson isn't on Devontae Adams level yet. And I'm not saying he will be, even though I did kind of just compare him to Devontae Adams. But you know, it wouldn't surprise me if Garrett Wilson has that kind of fantasy season. Yeah, and I think I think Garrett Wilson certainly re- is going to rejuvenate Aaron Rodgers' career. You know, a little pick-me-up, kind of like when you change jobs, you know, you just, like, have a little more pep in your step on that new job, first day at work type yeah. of thing. That's going to be Aaron Rodgers. Another guy that needs 
a little bit more pep in his step is someone we haven't talked about in like a year because he hasn't played, and that's Javante Williams. But we have him as one of our biggest winners of the offseason, and I guess that's just because the Broncos didn't really draft anyone to take his spot. They did mm-hmm. pick up Samaje Perrine, uh, Pirine. I don't like his last name, but <laughs> Samaje Pirine, he's, you know, some people are a little skeptical about that, but I I still think if Javante Williams is healthy, he's the guy. He's certainly a winner for the offseason. As of now, there's still a couple running backs that are signable, but as of now, Javante Williams is certainly a winner of the NFL offseason. Paul, what do you think? I think Sean Payton, Sean Payton, and Sean Payton. So I think he's going to completely... <laughs> and Sean Payton. Yeah, he's going to completely (laughs) come in and revamp this Broncos offense. I don't think Russell Wilson will ever be what he was in his late 20s on that Seattle team. But Sean Payton, I've said his name four or five times now, SP, will definitely come in and boost that offense. And Javante Williams will be a huge beneficiary of that. Like you guys mentioned, they did not go into the draft. And they did not James Robinson, Javante Williams, like... Urban Fraud Meyer did down in Jacksonville drafting ETN, even though ETN did end up working out. But James Robinson was like, dude, what the heck just happened? So it is still Javante's backfield. He is a very, very electrifying third down capable workhorse back who can catch passes. So I see his fantasy value, you know, being where we thought it would be last year before the injury. He's definitely on high watch alert though. Like, I'm going to have my eyes glued to Javante Ew. Williams because, like, I need to know if he's going to be a winner next year, you know, in 2024. Well, uh, that- because this is this is his final year for me, at least. Like, it's not like he's upset me, but we're getting to year three of his career. If I'm not seeing performance out of you as a running back on my fantasy team in your first three years, what makes you think that I can trust you to do it year four like it just well, that never happens that you actually brought up a really good point there john because it's Thanks. the saquon it's the saquon barkley effect i mean what if javante williams comes out and does not play this does not play well this year where it was similar to saquon he got hurt the next year everybody was like is saquon done is saquon done then the following year when he's actually fully healthy he comes up and he lights the world on fire so you're right that does kind of ooh, that puts a little inkling in my mind all right fine Two more years. But you know what stinks about the, – there's two different situations. Javante Williams was like – so so Saquon had the season-ending injury. Then he, then he came back week one healthy but sucked and then got hurt. Is that what happened? And then did amazing. No, like Saquon that's the got three-year hurt. Span. Saquon got hurt the year before, came back, was relatively healthy if not played. He was just mediocre. He was mediocre. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, mediocre, and then the next year, and now whether you could argue it was a contract year, it was whatever mm-hmm. that fueled his fire, but still, third year or the second year after the injury, is right? When it Saquon blew up. Seems to always be like two years after the injury is when the running back seems to be fully healthy. So, I guess in Javante Williams' sake, getting injured that early in his career may not be as damaging as I may think. This will stay on running backs here. Damian Pierce, he was an interesting rookie. The Texans got better, so that's why we're going to put him in one of the biggest winners for the offseason. Is he has a quarterback that can, that we feel can manage a game as of now, can definitely help the Texans win more, which if they're going to be leading, could help the game script out and provide more touches to Damian Pierce. So do you guys... What do you guys think about Damian Pierce's fantasy outlook here? Do you think he's going to continue on this winning streak of of helping teams win fantasy weeks? Bob? I am think he is a massive winner from the offseason because they did not draft anyone in the draft, obviously. And the only person that he's really competing with for carries if you want to call it competing for carries is Devin Singletary who you know is okay 
but not someone that you really would be worried about. He's a good handcuff, but it looks like this is going to be Damian P- Pierce's backfield again this season. So he's definitely a winner. I'm just not sure, really sure what the upside is for him yet. I know he was pretty consistent, but still need to see more from him to think that he's could be, maybe get into low end RB one territory. I think for sure, given the amount of workload that he's probably going to get, he could be in the RB two range, but if he's going to elevate, he's going to need to improve on last season. Yeah. I think there's like levels to the eye test where it's like, okay, like Damian Pierce, like, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't like a day one running back. So, you know, we're like, I think he was like a day three running back. So, so, you know, you drafted him with caution to begin with, and then he, he like exceeded expectations, you know, it's like, okay, like this guy can, this guy can carry a rock, but, um, he wasn't, he wasn't in that upper tier of running backs of, of that type of eye test where like this guy is a three down workhorse, super shifty back. He could make plays happen. And honestly, for a team that's down a lot, I do like the production that he got. So I'm, I'm interested to see how it changes with Stroud under center. Paul, you think Damian Pierce is as big as a winner as I do? Oh, I, I definitely think so. And I think the fact that they did not address the running back situation, especially with a new head coach coming in, that they look at Damian Pierce and what he did last year. I think he like led the league in yards after contact. He was like mm. a crazy, he broke so many tackles. It was like him and Ken Walker were like leading the league in broken tackles, like two rookies. And so I think this year it's Damian Pierce's backfield. I think D'Amico Ryan's a defensive minded guy is going to come in and want to run the ball, especially with a rookie quarterback and zero wide receivers, zero <laughs> pass catching options zero. in Houston. Damian Pierce is going to be a huge focal point of this offense. And, Last year, he showed that he can get the Rock 15, 16, 17, 18 plus times a game. And he's involved a little bit in the past game. That could have been Davis Mills' giant neck, only seeing him (laughs) over the offensive line in the flat and not looking downfield. But I'm very excited for Damian Pierce. I am very excited that I have him on my dynasty team. And I think that he is just a bulldozer, man. Like, he just makes guys miss. He runs angry, which is what I love, and I'm really high on him. I'm probably higher on him than most, though. But what's his like dynasty value right now? Because I I have a share of Damian Pierce too, and I was looking at like some trade calculators today, and it said that the one trade calculator on a keep trade cut, which is mainly it's it's using the general population as the rating system, so it's not necessarily experts, but it's a lot of avid fantasy users, so take what you will. But they had him as the RB16 for Dynasty running backs. Is that kind of a fair value of Damian Pierce? Like, borderline RB1, not bad enough to be an RB3. So, like, you're pretty much just going to see, like, 10 points a week from Damian Pierce. You'll have your touches of, like, 15, 16 points, but you're just never going to get into, like, those 25-point weeks with Damian Pierce. Do you guys agree with that? I do. I yeah. think, yeah, I think that's like, especially in Dynasty, I think that's proper range. You know, again, he just didn't show, he showed enough last year, but not enough to be in that top 12 range. He has another good year than I think he can, but he passes the eye test, but he doesn't pass the eye test like infinitely. You yeah. know what I mean? Doesn't blow me away, but he's a guy that I think he could kind of actually, if I'm thinking of a quick comp, not in play style or anything like that, but maybe in terms of fantasy production is a guy like Najee Harris. Yeah. Like consistent production, but maybe, but maybe you don't get a lot of ceiling games unless he's catching a lot of passes out of the backfield. Yeah. And just to kind of put it in perspective, we talked about keep trade cut, and I just did a real quick search on Damian Pierce. They have him valued in the same tier that they have George Pickens, Terry McLaurin, and I think the most interesting one here is another guy we just talked about, Javante Williams. Oh, I think I'd rather have Damian Pierce. I think I'd rather have Damian Pierce. 
I oof. I mean, I'm a little biased because I have Javante Williams on my dynasty team, but I'm also more willing to risk, you know, Jav- the short-term pain of having Javante Williams and coming back from that really tough injury because I just don't think there's much of a ceiling with Damian Pierce. I think there's a real, real ceiling with Javante Williams. Yes, especially just because of his pass catching ability. That's yeah. when you really see the ceilings reached by a running back in fantasy is when they're catching seven balls a game. Like that's just like free points there. We love to yeah. see that. And we love to see fantasy football winners, which is what we just did today. If you guys want to go look on the dark side of things and watch our fantasy losers, go back to our page. We go over all the losers that all you guys love to hear about, all all the bad stuff that happens in fantasy. Go back, watch that. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel. You can also follow along on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, We are also, for our audio listeners, on Spotify and Apple Music, so go ahead and follow along there, too. We've got a bunch more content coming out this week on all those social media platforms, so go ahead and give us a follow, share us with your friends, and comment down below who your biggest winner of the NFL offseason is. Everybody, have a great night, and thanks for watching. Bye, Vanessa.